This video has been done for educational purposes only and I do not support any form of drug making. This video will be making one of the most evil compounds on this channel. It's a potent acetylating agent and of course it's totally not on the legendary DEA chemical watchlist. Please don't raid me. And that's acidic and hydride. It has a lot of interesting uses like plastics, perfumes and other. So there are two roads to getting the acidic and hydrate molecule. One is expensive and easy, and the other one is extremely toxic, stupidly long, and because of the presence of sulfur chlorides, the whole process smells like shit. Naturally, as a poor slav, I took the second one and oh boy, I should have went the expensive route. Because instead of a measly 3 hours or 5 max, this shit took me a month and by the end of this procedure, I was pulling my hair out. So let's start with the beginning, which are sulfur chlorides. They are pretty much the only precursor of acetic and hydrate available to an average chemist, which isn't insanely expensive like acetyl chloride. So first of all, before recording, I've added a bunch of sulfur into a boiling flask. Here's me testing the gas trap setup. So to start, let's up the heat. The sulfur is really easy to melt because its melting point is 115C and we need it melted because we'll be passing the gas into it soon. This is going to be a fusion of the elements reaction and I'll soon explain what's going on. Eventually the sulfur melted due to the heat and now it's time to start the chlorine generation. I'm doing that by adding hydrochloric acid to some calcium hypochlorite pool tablets. Because I don't have an addition funnel yet, I'll be doing the addition manually. As soon as I've added the acid, a dreadful green gas started filling the system, and that's pure toxic chlorine, which was once used as a World War I battle gas. But soon, the whole reaction flask started getting this amber-yellow liquid, which is the beginning of our beloved sulfur chloride. As soon as the chlorine touched the molten sulfur, a reaction started happening. The first reaction was most likely the chlorine reacting with a molecule of sulfur to form sulfur dichloride, which is the thing which we don't want and it soon reacts with another atom of sulfur to make sulfur monochloride. Sulfur monochloride is amber yellow while sulfur dichloride is dark reddish. Both of them smell terribly and are extremely unpleasant. As soon as the sulfur chlorides were formed, they quickly start getting boiled off due to the present heat. The first to get boiled off is sulfur dichloride, which is a problem because we mainly want monochloride. Any chlorine or sulfur chloride vapor is being passed over to my beloved reverse funnel gas trap. The gas trap has a bunch of sodium hydroxide solution in it and NaOH neutralizes both the sulfur chlorides and the chlorine itself. Eventually I felt like the flow of chlorine really slowed down so I opened the flask and I've refilled the hydrochloric acid in the chlorine generator. To the right you can see there's a vacuum cleaner with a broken gas mask cartridge sucking up all the gas and filtering it. It's basically a poor man's fume hood. Anyway, the whole opening the flask with this shit clippers stick kind of went back and bit me in the ass. Mainly because I broke the stopper altogether and I couldn't really refill the chlorine. And once I stopped, uh, I guess there was an epic finale. Right, that's an epic and EXPLOSIVE finale. I was also able to get the stopper out, so... Well, I'm not sure why, but I think I was pretty pissed off at the time. That's the post anyway. The sulfur chlorides were capped in a volumetric flask and that's where they were kept till I needed them. Overall, after the procedure, the whole house just straight up reeked. I'm really underplaying this, the whole house literally smelled like rotting garbage with that classic sulfur rotten egg tinge for like 10 hours. Anyway, this is the last stop, which is acetic and hydrate synthesis. So first of all, I've started this step by drying my glassware. I did that by leaving it on a running heating mantle for around 10 minutes. Anyway, to a boiling flask was added a random amount of sodium acetate. Yeah, very scientific, huh? The boiling flask was then put into an ice bath to provide sufficient cooling for the reaction. Anyway, I started up my barely breathing vacuum cleaner and started adding sulfur chlorides into the mix. The whole thing visibly got quite heated on addition, and the powder started turning yellowish. That's due to the formation of sulfur, which I'll tell you in a minute. Next I set up the distillation apparatus and then turned on the heat. What's happening here is that sodium acetate is reacting with the sulfur chlorides to produce whatever this is and sodium chloride. This one itself looks quite similar to acetic and hydride and when the mix is heated it breaks down into it and sulfur. The problem with this reaction is that there are a lot of side reactions which either don't consume the sulfur chlorides or make new organo sulfur compounds. This reaction scheme was stolen from the Jesus of this video lab codes, and I can tell that he is also a connoisseur of smelling things that smell like sh As the heat is applied, it on itself is quite underwhelming, however the reactions which I have explained are happening due to the heat. Eventually, a liquid started coming over, 
and as soon as I saw it was yellow, I wanted to jump from a building. That's because Thanos was white, and reality is often disappointing. And that's because our sample of sulfur chlorides had a bunch of sulfur dichlorides. Which, as I said, is the thing which we absolutely do not want. Now, the bad thing here is that when everything came over, both fractions had this really strong smell of garbage. And I don't think there was much acidic and hydrate in the sample. And another huge problem is that my vacuum cleaner broke down and now I've had no ventilation. And the sulfur chlorides already stunk up the house and I couldn't repeat it did well for obvious reasons of not getting disowned by my family. So the worst had happened and I've had to take my lab outside and do the experiment in the night when there was no neighbors. Yeah, that's how bad it was. But the definition of insanity is... It's 2 in the morning. Are you guys having a good morning? Well, I'm f***ing not. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. That's all. Also, did I mention that it's f***ing raining here? This is the reflux, but we're not refluxing uh, sodium acetate and sulfur chlorides, we're refluxing here sulfur and the mixture of sulfur chlorides. So to correct my mistake, I'll be refluxing the sulfur chloride mixture under a bunch of sulfur. Alright, we the end game, boys. You can see it's pretty freaking yellow, which is really good. That means that sulfur dichloride, sulfur monochloride, I mean. And that is what we want, Jesus Christ. Alright, so it's 5 in the morning and I feel like I want to die, anyway. This is uh, 19 mils of sulfur chloride, uh, hopefully mostly sulfur monochloride, but I can see that it's really reddish, I have no idea why it's reddish, at first it was yellow. Yes, uh, I'm going to sleep, uh, good boy. So now the acidic and hydrate synthesis. Hey you, yeah you, Russian Blue is coming to Discord. You, you should join my Discord server now. So anyway, just like last time, we're here on the porch in the dead of night. Anyway, we have the ice cube, ice cubes here, the ice bath here, very standard. And I'm about to load about 10 mils of the dredged sulfur chlorides. Okay, so here's the sulfur chlorides. You can see that it has the nice color of sulfur monochloride, not that dichloride, which I hate. Anyway, you'll be adding a little bit of the sulfur chloride here. You will probably heat up a little. No, I need to put on. It doesn't seem as reacting as much as I thought, you know. It's classic here. It doesn't understandable. Really can see this, but I've just turned on the heat and it's going to start boiling in a minute. The main advantage of holding the reflux in a boiling water bath is that we can keep it at a sweet spot where the reaction can safely occur, and most of the sulfur chlorides react with the acetate. Eventually though, I've deemed the reflux to be complete, and now it's time for a full-on distillation. Acetic and hydride boils to 140 C, and whatever comes over below that temperature should be discarded. However, I don't have a thermometer head, so this is kind of like doing a surgery on someone with a blindfold. So yeah, there will be terrible separation to say the least. I've discarded the first portion because it wasn't even remotely flammable. It does smell not like this annoying sulfur chloride but more like acetic acid kind of stronger acetic acid which I'm not sure but it's probably acetic and hydrides thing however I have never t smelled acetic and hydrides and I'm not sure if it should be coming in there like this but this may be just uh, the leftovers from that uh, first portion because I didn't uh, wipe this beaker. Anyway here's me pipetting some of the distillate on a pan and lighting it with a Bunsen burner. I'm not sure that's from the Bunsen burner or something, but... Oh, but honestly, I have no idea if this is from the Bunsen burner. To be honest, when watching the Bunsen burner footage after recording, I've actually climaxed a little. You can see here at a slow mo, a little bit of these flames are traveling to the right randomly, which I think probably means that something has ignited for a little bit. But it's not something which ignites easily. Because, well, let's say it has a boiling point of 140C, but yeah, it does seem something is slowing down the acidic and hydride, which could be organosulfur compounds or just acetic acid or something. But I prefer not to believe that. Anyway, this is another step of making this really cool vanilla mild. See you later, remember to subscribe. Hey you, yeah you, Russian Blue is coming to Discord. You, you should, should join my Discord server now! now.